Uh, thanks for joining us in the car. Uh, this is kind of crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> and then, yeah, thanks for having me, Langdon. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really great uh, the back to the KubeCon. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, so, and then actually we returned to KubeCon in person last year, like in Los Angeles, but this is a pretty much bigger than last year. It, it seems yeah. like it. Um, yeah, I really, I, it's like so unpredictable how many people are going to be here, you know, yeah. like how many people are actually going to Yeah, I was, hold, I was hold, uh, I was told that like more than 7,000 is in person. Really? 7,000? Yeah, and then 14,000 is the postural audience right. we expected, but just along with the registration. Huh. Yeah, but... But you never know how many people will actually show up, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah, typically maybe 50 or 60 percent. But, you know, so yesterday we uh, co-located uh, event, a bunch of a lot of stuff, and then we saw a lot of people actually uh, showed up. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that's the, cool. Uh, yeah, registration. Be yeah. Because uh, I think the people pretty much comfortable feel yeah, finally, yeah. 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 Well, the protocols they're doing for KubeCon, I think, are pretty good. Like, they're doing the kind of the uh, health and wellness check every day. Yeah, that that's super helpful. You yeah. know, so I've been, uh, I've been doing, like, a business tree a lot of time uh, mm -hmm. for the past months. And then most conferences, they yeah, don't require the all audience to wear face, face mask. Mm -hmm. If you want, go for it, but <clears> not, yeah, mandatory thing. However, the CNCF or Linux Foundation, like a KubeCon, they asked all attendees to wear a face mask. It's a really cool thing. And then in the end, uh, not so much like a COVID uh, positive thing at the conference. Right, right. Because the last thing you want to do as a conference is be a super yeah, spreader event. Right? Exactly. Right. After the conference, everybody enjoyed the conference. But after yeah. the conference, everybody's starting to post like a Twitter hashtag COVID positive. Yeah. Sorry yeah. for that. Yeah. You yeah. should be take, uh, take care of yourself. Right. Yeah, yeah. I did um, uh, the little conference I do, uh, DevConf US. Um, exactly. We were really on the fence, um, yeah. but we uh, we decided to make them optional because it was the like target audience was local, yep. um, and Boston had pretty good numbers. Um, so we were kind of comfortable doing that, and you know we got away with it. I'm not sure it was. I still feel like I'm not sure it was the right choice, but it was. Uh, you know, it ended up working out okay. Yeah, um, that's right. So by the way, this is really cool. I mean, I never ever uh, have some chance to have an interview in, yeah, in the car. Yeah, in the car. Yeah, it's so really awesome. Just like uh, some kind of yeah, uh, TV show or right, like, right. some kind of Netflix uh, documentary. <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah. This is totally. it. It's it's uh it's been kind of entertaining. Of course, I just took a an incorrect turn, which I'm unsurprised <laughs> by. Um, yeah. No because worries. we are not doing the uh, correct route yet, so we're yeah. uh, we're still trying to get back yeah. to like knowing where we are. Yeah. Um, it should be okay. Uh, as long as we're sticking in the Detroit, they're not going to cross yeah, exactly. the board. <laughs> I know we got to be careful not to accidentally end up in Canada. Yeah, exactly. Because um, uh, apparently uh, we were talking to uh, some of the locals, uh, and they were telling us that uh, yeah, apparently it happens a lot that people get on this like on ramp to Canada, and all of a sudden they're stuck at customs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I was like, well, that's great. Let's yeah. let's avoid that. Exactly. Um, I don't even know that because the, this is my first time to be here in the Detroit, and yeah, some local yeah. folks told me yesterday, hey Dan, you know what? So the over the river, this is actually Canada. So yeah. Be careful. Yeah. You're not going <laughs> to go today, and you cannot maybe come back. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I uh, I don't know how I managed to. I actually came uh, and forgot. I didn't bring my passport. I totally should have. Um, yeah. But I. Uh, That's the thing. Yeah. yeah, but I don't have it. So yeah, let's not go to Canada. Yeah, um, and uh, you know, so I just want to shout out a uh, so new uh, CNCF project, one of the sandbox we just became like a conveyor. Yeah, I was going to talk about yeah, yeah. talk about conveyor a little bit. Yeah. Um, one of the things uh, I appreciate when they kind of went the sandbox route too. They've they've decided to like collapse some of the projects together. Yeah. So now it's just kind of one big project instead of the individual pieces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Conveyor is just uh, help people to uh, go on their application modernization journey. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Conveyor project com combines the multiple projects, for example, how to assess your ap application portfolio or architecture, not even the application itself, but also infrastructure layer, and right. also analyze application code itself, and then give some uh, tip and then like a guide how to modernize you and modify your application and configuration itself and it's not only uh, refactoring but also it showcases how to uh, transform your whole portfolio architecture from right. 
platform okay. and then host it virtual machine and bare metal and into the cloud. Right. Well, I mean, one of the things I really like appreciate by, about you know tools like Conveyor or whatever is it's um, significantly simpler to kind of have like a starting point. You know, uh, you it, know. So even if it's not perfect, like giving me something that's not just a blank wall exactly. is, is a great way to start. You know. Uh, so yeah. I yeah I think it's. Um, I've been actually, it's funny, I've interviewed various people about Conveyor uh, like a whole bunch of times over the past few years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's uh, it's been pretty cool. Yeah, uh, exactly. And one of the interesting, like, you know what, so the platform engineer is just some kind of virtual world. So everybody's saying a couple years ago as a the responsibility and what are you doing uh, for your company? And then most people said in specifically KubeCon, yeah, you know what, so I'm SRE or Ops engineer or DevOps engineer. And then recently a lot of people call themselves like a platform engineer. So mm -hmm. platform engineer uh, most likely uh, try to provide IDP, like an internal developer platform, mm -hmm. and also uh, manage their production environment. And one of the big challenges for them are uh, how to uh, optimize their uh, like uh, resources uh, to run the business application. Right. So that's why the app, the app modernization journey is not only developer uh, developer issue, but also the platform engineers' interest. Right. So I actually uh, managed one of the pre-event K Nebcon for serverless stuff yesterday. Yeah. And I got a, got a lot of chance to have some conversation with the SREs and their platform engineers. And they're really interested in the application modernization because they have something different approach to app modernization. Not focused on application, of course, but right. they're really focused on how to make uh, optimization my uh, internal developer platform as well as a production environment to run the developer's application. Right, right, yeah. right. So, so um, you know, however, like if you're going from like a, you know, a traditional application and you want to go towards like a serverless application, that's still going to require a fair amount of re-architecture uh, for the app, right? Yeah. I mean, what, like I think Conveyor is, is really kind of trying to bring the same application kind of to the cloud rather than, uh, you know, considering a, a re-architecture as much, right? Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, also it depends on the, uh, what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, that is true. So, Conveyor, yeah, kind of inspire uh, any uh, people, uh, ops people and developer, even any enterprise uh, companies, mm -hmm. how to get we start. And then it's, it's not a just a big bang stuff. So there are showcase the multiple step, like a long term plan. Mm -hmm. And then uh, first thing you're gonna start with this one. And then and then also you can have some plan for the next six months for the app modernization, not only uh, re-architecture, but also maybe small change application, like a strangler pattern. You can yeah. keep, uh, uh, make your app production environment stable. However, you can keep evolving your, uh, the architecture or platform that's like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, the, the both it, kind of the problem, yeah. right, with serverless, right, is like, it really does mean you've got to design your application around yeah. kind of an event-driven architecture, yeah. um, which is really nice once you have it, right? But yeah. but the, uh, you know, yeah. kind of getting from, you know, a traditional application to yeah. that level is, uh, you know, sometimes challenging. Yeah. Um, but I, I like the, I mean, one of the nice things about using something like Conveyor or whatever and kind of getting it into the cloud or whatever is yeah. then you can you can do that re-architecture potentially in pieces. Yep. So you can kind of say, okay, let's just pull this one feature out, move it to more of a serverless architecture, you know, and then, but you still have all the rest of it kind of already running in the same like Kubernetes cluster or whatever, so they can, uh, you know, communicate and, and all that jazz. Um, so I think it, it really does bring a lot to the table to be able to run it yeah, exactly. as, you know, in a containerized way, even if it isn't yeah. kind of architected correctly for a true containerized platform. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of cloud and a containerized platform, so you have a multiple choices to what kind of container platform you're going to use, so like a, mm -hmm. the Amazon Kubernetes service, like a AKS or EKS yep. or the Google Cloud platform, and that things yeah, I think it's a lot of cha uh, challenge for them because a lot of company actually move forward to multi-cloud or hybrid cloud strategies, mm -hmm. and then which means that we're not going to go to only Amazon. 
Mm -hmm. So, but the but still, you're gonna still use Kubernetes uh, as a container platform. Right. right. So, how to like uh, migrate from here and there, and then uh, we do some uh, minimum effort and uh, right. maximum uh, like uh, outcome. Yeah. So, conveyor yeah. project actually showcase the way. Uh, just like that for the yeah. like a multiple Kubernetes like a migration stuff as well. Yeah, I, I I'm surprised nobody's come up with like a buzzword yet of like cloud locked or something. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, um, know but uh, because you know it really is like the, the feature set often right when you kind of go to a um, you know a particular one of these platforms. It, they're not bad. Like, I mean, they're definitely adding good yep. features, but it really does lock you in if you're not really careful. And if you're new to, you know, kind of Kubernetes or new to working in the cloud in general, it can be yep. really easy to fall into that trap that now yep. you're totally locked to one provider. Yeah. Um, and so I think kind of having a little bit of an independent player, um, you know, <laughs> doing yep. doing your initial layout makes it so that you're less likely to get accidentally yep. uh, kind of vendor locked. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know for me, uh, it's, you know, I, I think, or at least I assume, right, uh, that a lot of organizations, you know, only end up vendor locked by accident. Like they don't, they don't intend to be using the feature set that is required to yeah. keep them in Amazon or wherever. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really good to have a little bit of an independent player. Yeah. There. Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's a real story. And then even that people doesn't know that we already locked in mm -hmm. because the, the feature set is a pretty comparable to use that because you don't need to run something new and then there are just some right. low running paths and then you just start it and you get uh, used that kind of stuff. Right. But in the end, after six months, oh, we got locked in. So we never have a chance to go to the other Kubernetes cluster. Right. And right. Even if it's a Kubernetes, it's a still open source community, but we cannot go there. So yeah. that's pretty weird. So that's kind of thing. And by the way, uh, the, uh, this is a cool, I mean, this cute by example. Yeah. 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 It's uh, pretty much the first the inside the car and the interview. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, pretty awesome. <laughs> and uh, the weather is really cold today. It's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a little grayer than yeah. I expected, but I thought it was going to be a little sunnier. Yeah. But we'll see what it looks like. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we, uh, we decided we're um, we kind of I guess we launched the Twitter handle today for yep. Cube by example, yep. um, and uh, you know obviously there's some presence at KubeCon and all that jazz. So uh, yeah. yeah, one of the people involved with the program who actually has been on the Insider Show yeah. uh, to talk about the uh, the like the new forums and stuff. Yeah. Um, she came up with the idea, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm totally all in. Let's <laughs> let's go, you know, yeah. drive around and interview people." Um, so uh, yeah, but you know, we got to make sure yeah. it's got a good route, and we'll kind of do it along. And I think yeah. it's been it's been pretty good so far. You yeah, know? sure. And uh, I'll, so I want I want to shout out uh, once again uh, uh, the QCon. If you have any chance to stop by the QCon this week, yeah. And then the, thanks for the board, and then they actually um, support us to uh, make this happening. It was right. a nice car. And the Rangdon actually, you gonna do uh, like a talk a little bit about the Ford the success story with some kind of panel yeah, yeah. So we're doing it's yeah. Wednesday. We have a talk on Wednesday. Yeah. It's like four thirty, I think. Yeah. Um, and we're actually gonna do a panel discussion about how. Don't miss that. Right, yeah, right, so, right. It's so pretty cool. Uh, so how Ford is doing, um, uh, using Q by example yeah. with their developers yeah. uh, to try to kind of bring them to, you know, doing development the, the cloud native way. Um, and so, yeah, when we heard about it, yeah. uh, we were like, hey, that's a great, you know, that's a great story for, you know, for both KubeCon and for Cube by example. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, you, know, you... you know, so we actually running in the electric car right, and right. Ford, and then this yep. is a, like a, some kind of, yes, Edgy technology, yeah, 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 and then the whole uh, information gathering like a telemetry data into the cloud. Well, I, well, I mean, yeah. I know a lot of organizations yeah. are pursuing uh, yeah. containerization yeah. for in the car. Yeah, you know, which is like, yeah. you know, I don't. It's just crazy, yeah. like the amount of soft, like the yeah. amount of software we're running in this car right now. Yeah, exactly, um, and then it makes uh, a driver and passenger will be more comfortable, right, and, right, yeah, more safe, right, yeah. Even yeah. if we keep talking, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, you, and you're driving, exactly. yeah. right, right, yeah. Uh, so you're doing a workshop today, though, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, thanks for sharing that. So uh, we have the Open the Commons, and then we uh, call uh, hosting like a conveyor workshop. Mm -hmm. So not only showcase what conveyor is, and then what is the roadmap, but also we uh, give them people uh, have some hands-on experience and 
how the star and you know, what uh, the conveyor looks like. Mm -hmm. So it's good, just one hour even. But after the workshop, uh, if you uh, you can visit it, uh, Cuba example or. Uh, reach out to any red header, and then you can go to uh, like even if you have a chance to stop by a cube con. Anytime swing by red hat booth, we are more than happy to yeah, share yeah. the more details. But once again, uh, today uh, we're gonna start uh, at nine, but the Hanjo workshop is uh, starting ten. It's a one hour, but it should be, should be fun because. Yeah. It's, uh, but don't forget, bring your laptop. Right, right. Yeah. Are you um, and so. Let's say you do miss it today. Is there an opportunity to kind of go and yeah. do the workshop on your own or something? Yeah, on your own? yeah. That's a really good question. So the workshop is a. Uh, I'm gonna make it available, but so you can actually the all workshop content is available in a public repo. Mm -hmm. However, so if you ask any Red Hat sales folks, and then we are more than happy to support and provide the workshop environment for free. Oh yeah, and we're gonna yeah. go to your customer uh, side to uh, we're gonna bring you into one of the Red Hat office and uh -huh. then just to uh, just spare with us like a uh, half a day or well, full day. We are more than happy to yeah address not only conveyor but also we also have like a uh, SRE track mm -hmm. and a business track as well. It's not gonna hang on though, but. So business uh, track, we're gonna talk a little bit more like uh, the strategy and then like uh, planning, and right. how to go to your cloud, and not only um, hands on stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, to be honest, right? I think a lot of developers don't um, kind of fully appreciate uh, <laughs> the importance of like essentially like a project portfolio or like yeah. a you know. Um, when I was in consulting, one of the things we specialized in was actually doing, you know, portfolio roadmaps, you know, around modernization. Um, in particular, it was like the early days of the cloud. And so we were, you know, kind of come in and actually help them plan how they were going to get, uh, you know, all their existing applications and, and also try to recognize all the new applications they were building and how they were going to get them into the cloud. And, uh, you know, it gave me a real strong appreciation for like how hard that is, um, you know, to to really yeah. understand it and and the value there. Uh, yeah. Because if you're if everybody's kind of going all directions all at the same time, you never get anywhere, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think that's actually a, a pretty valuable component. Uh, the other thing I was going to say about the workshop was like yeah. um, I've been uh, trying to stand up this um, this data server called Ccan. Yeah. Um, and. Like it's so nice to have an expert kind of show you how to do something the first time, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, where like you know I'm just trying to like fight through the docs, trying to figure yeah. out how to make it work, um, you know, and 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 like there's all that stuff you get from experience that you that you it's just impossible to document yeah. about like what's the right way to set it up, you know, yeah. what's the what are the tricks? When am I going to forget later? Yeah. or have to rearchitect later, um, and I think it makes a big difference if you can have somebody who's kind of showing you the ropes, and then when you run into a problem, you can kind of ask the question. Right, right, um, yeah. yeah, totally agree with that. And yeah. then, so the workshop, so most like the workshop is mainly focused on only developers or sometimes mm -hmm. ops mm -hmm. people, but. So the thing is, the maybe the decision maker, like uh, some CTO level, or even the architect, they are really happy for like a next journey or next yeah. technology. Yeah. However, the rest of them, like eighty percent of your organization, they don't like the decision mm -hmm. because oh, we're gonna go to uh, like uh, some migration tool with this one, and then right. we're gonna go to like uh, AKS or another Kubernetes cluster. However, the individual developer or individual SRE, oh, we don't like that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the problem. So that's why. Secure by examples and then like a conveyor project, we're not gonna only focus on developer, but also ops people and then even decision maker uh, right, for right. helping and understanding what uh, their next journey should be. Well, you often feel like, right, is that um, you have like some architect level person, um, you know, kind of making some decision, um, you know, and then there's like a magic happens here yeah. and then the developer <laughs> gets handed it, right? And you're like, yeah. wait, what? Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, kind of going back to conveyor, it's like, yeah. hopefully that's providing yeah. some of that, you know, magic yeah. happens here component, um, as well as it seems particularly well suited to kind of portfolio planning, right? I mean, the entire yeah. tool is about, yeah. you know, doing that kind of movement yeah that, um, that's that's hundred percent agree so it's just showcase the variety of the approach how to add modernization mm -hmm. just like a portfolio so some some part of that is uh, 
handled by developer and some part of them is by like a decision maker and then the rest of them is by SRV or platform engineers. Yeah, yeah. And then in the end, you can combine all needs and requirement, even potential issue, you can handle that by your cross teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the beauty of the conveyor project right. uh, to help them. Yeah, totally. Um, so, what do you think, or what do you, what are you kind of most looking forward to in like, like, let's say the next six months, in, um, you know, any of the projects you're kind of involved with? So that's a really good question. So you know, also I most likely uh, focus on some kind of more realistic practice. Mm -hmm. For example, I, yeah, I'm a, I, I want to say I'm just like a ordinary Java guy, and then. So the problem is there are many Java applications around the world and across industries. And then problem is everybody wants to go to cloud and Kubernetes or some stuff. Mm -hmm. And what is the best practice to integrate uh, like some brand new technology? For example, oh, I can deploy my application to cl cloud or Kubernetes. And mm -hmm. then, but I don't know how to integrate my application pr uh, deployment or build strategy or practice with the existing like a CI CD. Mm -hmm. Or uh, we have a CI CD like a Jenkins. Right. It's uh, right. 10 years old, grown man. However, mm -hmm. in the Kubernetes, maybe it's too old. So, what is the new kind of stuff like a Tecton or Argo right. CD? It's a new, brand new stuff. So, you know, also I have uh, some like old truck, and now, now I need to uh, buy a new brand like an electric car by Ford. Right, right. And, but I don't know how to how to drive right because right. all you know also right. we we just try to figure it out how to open trunk right right <laughs> in this yeah, morning, yeah. To we, be honest. We, we've had we've yeah. had a number of troubles like yeah. we couldn't figure out how to open the trunk it's, it's couldn't just, figure out how yeah. to like it's charge just, the car yeah, yeah it's just like a big ipad on the yeah. center panel and oh we cannot find the button <laughs> where is that <laughs> right but right. it obviously it's just somewhere at the right side but there's no okay that's the thing <laughs> So that's gonna I'm gonna help and evangelize the not only developer but also like a platform engineers. Yeah. Bring their business services into cloud with integration uh, with the, like uh, some uh, the buzzword like uh, right. the GitOps and then like a serverless and then service mesh because some people say oh that's not my responsibility it's so more like uh, for them but it's not true because we are working together as right. a team or not by like an individual contributor. Right. Yeah, that's why uh, I'm really looking forward to um, evangelize like a serverless and a service mesh and get off stuff. Yep. Yeah, with the, of course, Kubernetes. And then most likely not going to try to just uh, presentation. It's more like a create a more value of a content, like a demo and hand on and then like a sample code, which means that everyone just can replicate it there if they want. Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. And then, you know, so i so thankful because uh, I got uh, so many inspiration during the KubeCon. Mm -hmm. Even if some of uh, the, uh, the exhibit, the, I mean, the booth area. So there are so many vendors and so many uh, people actually showcase their new stuff. Right, right. You know, based on... That's one of the things, yeah. like, yeah. I always get to me about conferences, like, it always gets yeah. me jazzed up, right? Because yep. you're like, oh, you know, hey, I'm, I'm like, re-engaging kind of with the, exactly. you know, with the ecosystem, with the community, um, yeah. and, and it's always, like, yeah. a really positive experience. Yeah, and then I just, I just know, and then what is the trend is, so, for example, the year ago in the QCon, Los Angeles, and then I saw a lot of vendors actually try to showcase their multi-cloud Oh like yeah, problem yeah. and of course migration tool from this Kubernetes and that Kubernetes. Right. And this is actually one of the capability conveyor as well. So and then this is some kind of trend what people really want to showcase, which means that there are some market trend and then needs mm -hmm. came out. So this is a really, really good opportunity uh, to figure it out. Uh, what uh, technology really interesting by ecosystem, mm -hmm. specifically QCon. That's one of the big reasons I always wanted to be uh, attend the QCon. Right, right. Not only like an ambassador stuff, but also it's more like a interaction right, with people. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny um, that, again, the little conference I do, DevConf.us, um, yep, sure. we do, we, we try to 
uh, we actually offer attendee training. Um, yeah. Because uh, you know, if it's your first conference or whatever, like, what is the hallway track? Um, and uh, and I, I think it's really important to like kind of as you say, it's like that's half the value, right? Is like getting you know getting to see people you don't see very often. You know, maybe getting to meet you know some yeah. engineer who works on a thing that you care a lot about. Um, and I think that's a that's a huge part. You know, I ran into uh, Luke Hines, uh, yep. for example, just this morning. You know, outside. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and, uh, you know, so we were chit-chatting a bit about, uh, you know, what, what he's doing. Yeah. Um, you know, but he was on the show yeah. uh, that, a while back. That was really awesome. And then, yeah. you know, so I was there too. And then, yeah, thanks yeah. for having me, by the way. Yeah. So, you know, one of the impressive thing in the last DevOps, the DevComp in the Boston area. Yeah, yeah. So I saw the college student actually came out right. in a podium and they actually showcased their internal project. Yeah. Which yeah. is super awesome because they, whenever we... Uh, just go to any uh, conference, maybe it's not the young stuff. Right, you it's know, all it's so, all the, the people who are really strong, yeah, right? Yeah, been people doing already it for a have time. some, uh, yeah. like a maybe 10 years experience, right. and, and, and they say, oh, I'm super professional, right. something right. like that. But however, so whenever we some uh, inspire like some new technology, but mm -hmm. we don't know actually like a college is to, uh, uh, feel that right right yeah yeah I, it's i mean it's one of the nice things about working at the university now right is like they're uh, the, you know i have all these all yeah. these students and then we also you know we showcase yeah. some of the interns at um at that conference but we get to see uh, their excitement you know their their yeah. interest and what you know wh how they want to change the world yeah. you know and it's it's really interesting um and it really does kind of at yeah. least for me like uh, reincorporate me back into like try to give me back some of that early excitement about what you know what can happen yeah um, at the same time it's also funny it's like yeah. uh, how inexperienced they yeah. are which you don't kind of realize because at least exactly. for me right it's like I don't feel like I know anything <laughs> and then yeah. uh, you know and then I meet some of these students yeah. and I'm like oh wow all right you've got yeah. you've got a little ways to go yeah um, exactly yeah. yeah so yeah so it's totally different approach to how they're looking at the technology yeah. Yeah, and then they are more like okay, maybe some colleges don't. Yeah, I need I need to find a more uh, more high chance or uh, opportunity to get new job right. based on right. their technology, and so they don't believe the market uh, like a report things like that. Yeah, so this is brand new, and then I really like that. So you should keep doing this right, stuff right. in the DevCom. And yeah, yeah. Thank God. I really like you doing it. It's like a lot of fun. The yeah. Boston University professor, <laughs> right, which is right. a really good position <laughs> yeah. to bring this one, and I'm so thankful. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been. It was. Uh, we had the idea a few years ago, and uh, it's been really great. Um, you know, it's. I think it's worked out really well. It's always a lot of fun to do it, um, yeah. and the students are super excited. Yeah. Um, so, which is cool. Yeah, and then um, you know, so the the Monday actually there at KubeCon for kids. Yeah, so, yeah. Then I know. Also, I miss. They used to do it in front of Red Hat yeah. Summit, and I really miss it. It was really cool. Uh, I didn't Arun even Gupta. know that. I didn't even yeah. know that. When I arrived there, I, I just find that oh, there are some small workshop with the kids, and then like yeah. a, the pie thing, like a Raspberry Pi, and then right. they actually develop some kind of the Minecraft. Did stuff. they do Minecraft mod yeah. again? Yeah. You know, so yeah. I have a ten years boy, yep. my son, and he really into that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I brought should, I brought my kids yeah, the one in front of Red Hat Summit. Too, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Did you did you actually get into it, or did you no, just, you uh, just saw I, the notification? Yeah, I arrived okay. there, it's already end, but yes, I, yeah. I saw that there are some uh, happening there, but yeah. I didn't know that. Well, yeah. what I was super impressed by, I assume it's still true, but yeah. um, the uh, uh, Mozilla yeah. actually writes a lot of the stuff that they deliver yeah, cool. at that. Um, and uh, uh, like that stuff's all actually available, and it's really good. Um, and really like, you know, understandable and all yeah. that stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I really like, I like the whole event as well as the fact that, you know, Mozilla actually kind of puts a lot of investment yeah. into it too. Um, so, you know, but yeah, that's, that's a really great cool. And then, yeah, yeah, we're going to maybe, uh, some figure out, uh, how do we make it valuable or valuable for cute by examples yeah. stuff yeah. as well for the kid. Right. Because they, that there are potential super awesome developer in the 10 years. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's really, it's hard to make this stuff accessible. I mean, yeah. I think that's one of the things that I find a little difficult is we were joking about this earlier, um, is like, I'm not that into hardware, um, <laughs> but it's a lot easier, I think, yeah. for a kid to engage with like a Raspberry Pi yeah. or whatever than it is to like, you know, build a Kubernetes exactly. cluster, right? Exactly, like, exactly. You get, yeah. It's a lot more, you know, real feeling. And I think. It's, it's so creative. So yeah. Yeah. even though we don't even think about it and then, oh, 
they're going to use this uh, platform or technology with it so much different ways. Well, and it's yeah. it's also so natural for them, right? Exactly, it's like, yeah. you know, all us old people who didn't grow yeah. up, you know, directly in, yeah. you know, in computers. Um, you know, because we already narrow some right, eyes. Right. Okay, we're going to just use this kind of stuff or the kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah. The, oh, it turns out, wow, you just so creative thing right because they, yeah. they'll put things things yeah. all together wrong you know and end up yeah. we end up with really cool things yeah. which it wouldn't even occur yeah. to us to put together yeah and yeah. of course so we're gonna add bring more uh, some kind of the gaming stuff mm -hmm. that's one of the uh, attractive thing for kids mm -hmm. yeah like a yeah. Ro Roblox yeah. or Minecraft yeah it's a good motivation yeah, I think uh, one of the Mozilla, the, yeah. the Mozilla ones is yeah. like a JavaScript thing yeah. where um, in, it's like a platformer and yep. you the way you have to play the game is by yep. writing JavaScript to give you the next like platform to yeah. jump onto. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's really pretty cool. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. So my son actually, once again, he actually never ever asked me about the program language. Mm -hmm. but so a couple of months ago and summer vacation, he actually asked him about JavaScript. Oh, really? So how do you yeah. know that that was JavaScript? Right. Right. And then, oh yeah, I just know that uh, how to customize the Roblox map. Oh, it's a yeah, bit of JavaScript. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Oh, that's the thing. Right. Okay, that's a really good approach to uh, learn new technology. Right. <laughs> right. Well, it's funny because that's in some ways a lot of people say it's the same motivation as in open source. Yeah. Is like you you get into open source because you want to scratch your own itch, right? It's like yep. something about the computer is making yeah. you crazy, yeah. so you go fix it, right? Yeah. That's um, exactly reminds me it's because when I just started like a, my son's age, like a 10 years boy, mm -hmm. uh, when I was there, so I just started like a computer stuff for fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a, some, some kind of purpose. Right. Yeah, so, and then at a time, I'm so... Uh, enjoyed uh, spending my time to make some programming stuff. Right, right. All right, so I'm here, and then uh, hopefully you got a next. Who's the next speak? Next oh yeah. So here. next up, we're gonna talk to uh, Liz Rice. Um, oh. And uh, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, yeah. And uh, but yeah, thanks so much for coming by. Sure, uh, and yeah. thanks for having me. And yeah. then I'll uh, talk to you soon. Yeah. See you guys. <laughs>